we don't have a client asking for GM. We have a lot of clients asking for not GM. The farmers are the owners of Agromize, and Agromize is the owner of this company that uh, supplies seeds, fertilizer, and agrochemicals for, for the, the farmers. But our most important role is to, to trade. Uh, we have about 25% of the Portuguese uh, production, and GMO represents about 3% of our uh, maize. What we are doing to, to, to separate uh, BT and no BT, it's to control the seed, for, it's the, the first stage. The second, it's to, to make uh, analysis on the, on the product here in our stores. And uh, late, uh, we control the transport for our clients, 97% uh, of, of our maize is known GMO, so we don't have extra costs on that. The clients of our clients, they demand 0%, like uh, Coca-Cola, like Nestle, like Heineken, or like Carlsberg, for example, in Portugal. All of them, they, they, they ask for 0%. We, we, we always have 0% on our, on our maize, okay? But we are not free of having an accident. So we don't guarantee 0%. We, can, we, we always guarantee that we are inside the, the maximum level authorized by the EU. I suppose that, that's enough for, for the clients of our clients. The food market in Portugal, it's, it's about 80,000 tons. And we supply for them about 50,000. The known GMO clients, they always want the, the same quality, the same quantities every year. So it's, it's, it's very interesting for us because we know always that a lot of tonnage that we have here is always for the known GMO industry. And that represents about, in this moment, about 40% of our, of our business. It's much more easy to control all the process here than in importing maize with problems of contamination in, in ships, in trucks, in, in the ports, and so on. I suppose that is one of the main reasons that they prefer the, 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 the domestic maize. I'm going to try to explain you how we can guarantee the IP preservation of non-GM corn arriving to Aveiro. So the, the crane can be a modern and a power one. Normally with this crane I can unload 500 tons an hour, but to this operation I use fillers like this one. A filler is this. I use grabs like this one, old grabs but also clean, that I can guarantee that in any part of this equipment there has been contact with OGM products. <laughs> Bom dia. Of course, for handling these kind of operations, we have a special team that know exactly what are our requirements. So when you have this kind of operation, we have a meeting before with them 
explaining exactly what we want the, them to do, and if they have any doubts, they will ask us. And they are people that we trust. They are too expensive, but we must pay the kind of the quality of service that we have. And uh, until now, every operation of this kind has uh, finished in a successful way. So this is a, a normal store that uh, complains with the normalization about food safety. But besides all this normal legislation, we have special procedures also to assure that on the previous six months no OGM product pass on this store. Will be also a bobcat operating here. This bobcat has been special treat, cleaned and so on, and I will also try to avoid if this bobcat has been working with soya, for instance. In every step, you also take samples, make analysis uh, on, uh, how do you say, aleatory basis. So it's a slowly, much more slowly operation. I say that it costs more 30 to 40 percent to unload a vessel of this one compared with a normal vessel. But uh, I'm not selling papers, I sell products to my customers and I must be sure that there is no risk of contamination at all. If normal corn will cost here in a tech in average 200 euros metric ton, and no OJM corn could cost uh, 250, 25, 30 percent uh, more depending on the years. For us, it's interesting because it is, uh, how do you say, an ad value product with a, a bigger margin than with the, the normal corn. Being in Europe and uh, forgetting the guys, I see this is uh, a future, a small market, but a future market where people are getting results. So when Nestlé, when uh, Unicer, when Superboc, when the cereals with cornflakes find a better corn, sure is a better corn than the normal one. I'm not sure that the corn is better for being no OGM, but it is, is better being an IP corn since the field. Maybe it will be possible in a short-term future to say it's okay, every corn is OGM, but this is a OGM that you accept, that you have tests, that you have already information. So the IP is a wonderful tool to defend ourselves and to make the difference between bad guys and good guys. And I think even for the food supply chain, it's very important to begin to make some difference between who is respecting, who is not respecting what we think is good for the human being and for the humankind. <laughs>
I buy the maize according to, to the specifications of, of our customers. So I have all the certificates of my customers, so of my suppliers, sorry. So we have their results, their analysis, but their batches are, are too, hot, too big for us. So that's why we have to perform smaller batches in order to, to fulfill our needs. And we, we test those batches. If, if we have some, some contamination or some cross-contamination, we can, we can split the, the, the usage of one and the other. And after that, it goes to the mill to start working safely. And then, naturally, the, the final product is, is also tested. We have to, to increase our extraction rate in order to be more competitive. So we are in a working process with our, our, our suppliers in order to have different seeds, non-GMO naturally, but um, different seeds more appropriate to our needs. The development of non-GMO maize is very, has been very successful for the past years. So I think we, have, um, we are in the right way in order to, to have um, better conditions to have non-GMO non -GMO stuff in a, in a larger scale. And I think the, um, the non-GMO is getting an advance over G GMO, GMO maize in Portugal. Mm -hmm.